Hello everybody and welcome back to Sandy Bay. This is Sandy Bay Gold Edition and what I've done is I've transferred everything over so we're pretty much starting from where we left off. Which is uh, good to know because we had done so much work and if we would lost it all it would have been very frustrating. In fact we did lose all of the information about the livestock and I've had to manually re-add it all. But it is back now as you can see we've got 50 beef cows, 50 pigs, and then I've put 3,000 for everything else. Obviously the manure and slurry will make itself. And uh, also the chickens, cows, and sheep, we have got all that back as well. So we had lost it. I transferred the vehicle's XML file over and the career save game. In fact, I transferred everything over. But for some reason, the livestock data would not transfer. So the uh, last resort was just to enter it manually, which thankfully has worked. So for those of you who haven't got a PC and can't play on this uh, map, or just don't have Farming Simulator at all, this is what's new. In fact, there's a lot new, but this is the yard. We've got a new shed here. This is the, the part where I said it was a bit open and bare, so it's good to see that there is a nice shed here. It's not much wasted space. Uh, another open shed here, which we've got the Crone Big M in. I think that was there before. It's a bit muddier. We've got... The Dutch barn which is already there. This is all the same. There is a lot of fixes though and that is the main thing. There have been a lot of fixes. I think field number 20 is fixed as well. So we're going to try field 20 out actually. We're going to have a mega harvest. Who's up for a mega harvest? Because <laughs> we're going to go for one. I've got three combine harvesters. Two are rented and one we own. This is our one. And the two which we've rented are already at the field. I've just been setting everything up. It's taking about half an hour just to set everything up. Didn't think I'd record it though because it'd be quite boring. So this is uh, our Lexium 580. We've got another 580 and possibly a 600. I can't remember what I bought or rented. Um, we'll have to go and see. But we've also got the horse chaser bin. And this is also rented. A lot of the stuff we're going to use today is rented. But I'm going to go down to the field now. This should be thoroughly enjoyable, hopefully. I'm really looking forward to this, because field 20, as you'll probably know, is a huge field. Absolutely massive. Really looking forward to this. Now, whether or not the Combine will follow us... <laughs> no, the Combine will not follow us. Uh, we will just uh, drive that later, I think. It's probably easier, actually, because it is quite tight around some of these roads and um, it would just probably be easier overall. Got my foot off the accelerator. It's picking up speed on its own. A lot of momentum with this. I'm going to go right out of here though because it's quite tight going left. It is doable. But it just makes it a bit harder. So yeah, we're going to have three combines. They've all got 1050 headers. 10.5 meters and really looking to get the field done today. I'm kind of debating whether or not we should bale it. I don't know. I don't know what's the best thing to do because there's going to be a lot of bales. It's going to create a lot of lag. So um, what I might do is I might put it on swath mode and then decide later. If we don't want it we'll just plow it in or something. If we do we'll go for it. I'll, I'll probably do it just so we've got the option. But we're going to be using the Horsch Titan 34 UW. The lorry, which is also rented. All rented for a day. And uh, I'm also going to go and get a trailer as well. Like a backup trailer. So we will leave the bin just there. And I'll try again at getting the combine to follow, but it might not work. I did a poll in the video last week and said, can you put any grain in for the pigs and the beef? And um, the reaction mainly was either you didn't know or yes, you can use any grain. And uh, I haven't tried it because obviously I just said that I've just put it in manually, but it looks like you can put any grain in, so we'll be able to do that in the future. But as we're going to be doing a big harvest now, it probably won't matter anyway. But it's just good to good to know that kind of stuff. 
like I say, the Stuart trailer is just a backup. We probably won't even use it. It's just if I'm tipping the lorry and we're not back in time, looking out to the chase have been into it. Now, cosplay would actually be a fantastic mod to use today. However, those roads are so tight around there, I don't know if it will work. So I'm going to leave it for today. But it probably would work, but there might be quite a bit of crashing. If you set the speed low enough, it might work, but it's a lot of setting up. Okay, taking the combine down, and <laughs> I put the tractor on follow me, and it just decided to drive in a circle, so forget that idea. Yeah, obviously doesn't want to follow us, so I think we'll go back to the original plan and just drive everything to the field ourselves. It's not even far, so makes it easy. Now I've got the cameras again. Love using these cameras. As a lot of you did point out, I think it's camera number two, this one that we're on now. Uh, I was calling it a rear camera before, but I think as you quite rightly pointed out, it's actually on the auger. So it will go out when the auger goes out. Just attach the header to the trailer because I don't want that flying off. We'll never get that back on on these tight roads. They are big headers the combine. The combine can take it though. People do in real life. But it is probably the biggest you'd want to go. You probably wouldn't want to put a 1200 header on a 580. Now this field is big. It really is massive. So I'm going to try my best to get as much done today as possible. But if it's going to look like it's going to take too long, I'll split it into two videos. Because when you first glanced at it, you think, oh, that won't take too long. But then like when I was doing the spraying, I edited so much out of that video. It took forever. It really did. It took a long time. And the working width of that sprayer is much wider than a header. But we do have three of them, so it does make it easier. So that is all three headers lined up. I'm going to start with our combine, the one I'm in now. And I'm going to take... What I could do, actually, is I could put all three of them on follow me and then offset them then we can take three headlands off in one go that would be quite fun to see I will give it a go but I can't guarantee it will work now I need my tractor to pull these header trailers out of the way if there's any room left we will put this trailer somewhere I might take it right down the other side past this combine should be okay just there. So let's pull our first header trailer out of the way. We're going to have to pull all three out of the way, put them somewhere, and then we'll be able to get the first one started, give us enough space to get the second one started, and then the same for the third one. So it might be quite a repetitive task to begin with, but once it is working, fingers crossed, it's going to go well. But that is only if it's going to work. So that is our first one. Better put it somewhere. Probably put it here. We'll get it attached to the second one ready. So that is uh, good. Now for our first combine, let's start. So I want this to be in swath mode. It says enable straw swath. That's what we've done. Unfold the combine. That gives us a bit of space. So that is our second combine's header on and the third. Put that one there. And the second combine, which need to unfold the header. There isn't a great deal of space.
and I'll do the third one off screen just to make it easier there we go so they are 9.5 meters apart that is the setting I've given them obviously they're not going to stay like this this is just for doing the headland so it won't really matter because they'll be doing different sections of the field but I think we need a, a tiny bit more distance between behind I would say they might be travelling a bit too close or maybe not it's pretty good it's quite a good thing this uh, I just need a really decent screenshot hmm oh yes <laughs> that is working well so let's get those camera settings changed which one should we have it on uh, probably probably that one probably keep it on number two and um, we are going to get to the end this is the tougher part wait for it to come out of the back and then we will do a nice turning circle here so everyone can get around hopefully there might be a bit of crashing going on but we'll see and then we'll go all the way around to the outside now I'll probably split them into different parts of the field so they all have a different area to cut or harvest we're back on track they did get a bit confused there but they're okay now uh, it's the way I drive if, if I could drive with a big enough turning circle for all of them then none of them would get stuck they just have to be able to follow us that is the issue this is working so well I didn't think it would work so well we can have four combines but that might be a bit over the top I think three is a good amount and these are fairly big combines so I think we'll stick with three we couldn't even afford to have four actually it's about £20,000 per day per combine plus headers plus trailers so yeah it's quite expensive but this is barley this crop and uh, the wheat would be for the chickens the grain conveyor is blocked you have to clean before you can work in wow I've not had that issue before nice and realistic so how do you do that I've never done this before so I'm at the front here next to the combine and it says clean grain conveyor by pressing B so we'll do that hopefully that's sorted the issue now if the other two do it I won't actually know when they're doing it so unless they've all got the same issue I don't know they seem to have stopped right they weren't actually blocked but they were at 90% load and look we're getting it again almost wow this is a dense crop here actuator load I think that is uh, if I go any faster it's going to block so I've got to stay quite slow I won't be able to use the chaser bin properly until all three of them are set up individually that's the tricky part oh almost got it again this is such a dense crop down here it shows our spraying did a good job Whoa, what is going on there? I think I'll put the auger out, ready, and then we'll be able to unload them all. So hopefully this tractor will be powerful enough. I think it will be. It's quite a big tractor, but it is also a very big chaser bin. Some people call it an auger wagon. There are a number of different things you can call it. Uh, where I come from, it's uh, mainly used, it's mainly called a chaser bin, but I know that some people do call it an auger wagon, or even probably some other names as well. But that is all three combines pretty much full. I don't want to fill them because all the um, headers will turn off and it'll be a bit of an uh, annoying thing to get started again, but let's just get it done. It's actually, with, with such a wide intake with all three, it's not taking much time really to do this. I'm amazed. It looks like the biggest job is preparation, taking ages to set it up, but not really too long to harvest. We should get lots of money out of this. 
while that's unloading, I can kind of decide what we're going to do next. And I think if we put it onto auto combine, the first one onto auto combine, the others should just follow as if it was me driving. There probably will be a bit of crashing and I'll have to sort them out, but I think overall it should work okay. I'm not sure why the auger of the other one went in again. This is probably one of the biggest harvests I've ever done. Like barley harvest. But obviously we did that massive, that huge silage harvest uh, for the Christmas special. But yeah, for, for combine harvesters, this has got to be the biggest. We'll just create a bit of space between us. There's the train. So it's not going to fill the chaser bin, but it is going to make it relatively full. Right. Auto combine. You need to be on that side, I think. better. That wants to be following us closer. And if all that's going to work then we're going to go up to the lorry and empty this. I really hope that does work. There's a lot of tight turning there. It does make it hard the first time round but with a bit of luck it will work. We might have to put a bigger distance between the three. They are a bit close to each other. But it's going to be easy enough to bail. Nice and neat. Yep, that one's pulled in front of the other. So we just need a bigger space between them. All sorted. They're all back on the go. You can see we've got a bigger gap between each one. Now when they get to the end and turn, it shouldn't create an accident or just have one getting in the way of the other. Hopefully, but you know, it, they might do. It's just the way it is. Now that lorry probably wants to be in a bit of a better position, it's not in the best place ever, and this starting point here might confuse the first combine, but once we're going, once we've gone round once, it should be fine. And I will probably take over anyway by the time we get back here. Looks like the first combine is ready to empty, in fact they all are. The first combine is pretty much full. There is just such a high yield on this field. I'm not really in any rush though. Just take it nice and steady. So that is all three done. The only thing about having them all follow me is they don't put the auger out automatically, which can get a bit frustrating. But other than that, it actually works really well. This was empty when we got to the three combines. It's now 93% full. It's a serious amount of grain. Yeah, I definitely do not regret spraying the field. It really worked well. So the trailer is 99% full, it's pretty much there. We have got this one down here which we can fill, and I probably will do. So that is 
three headlands off. That is all we really need to take off. And then uh, we're just going to have probably this combine going up and down here. The next one going in the middle. And then the other one on the far side going up and down there. Um, and I think that is probably the best way of doing this. Because, well, we've done the hardest part. Because now they can't crash into each other. Uh, and that will also keep them all moving at the same time. It will also mean the chaser bin will be more effective because it's not that easy at the moment but next time it will be so as we've got all three here we might as well unload them fill the lorry and fill the trailer and then we'll be able to empty those and then tomorrow we'll be able to complete the field and really have a good stab at it it should go really well so i'm going to just unload these combines now it's a good taster of what is to come. They don't really want to be going around following each other again. So that is the first combine done. Now the second one. We'll turn the engine off for the first one. And the third one, we're not going to fill the trailer, but that's fine. This is like a backup trailer. And then I think we'll take the lorry and this tractor and trailer to the store now, or maybe to the yard, and tip them. Yeah, I think we'll take it to the yard, actually. What's the price like? If it's, if it's really bad, well, it's, it's normal. No point. So, uh, yeah, we'll just take it all to... The sheds in our yard and keep it there until the price is a bit better if we can get great demand then we'll be able to make an absolute fortune out of all of this I've got the lorry following us hopefully it'll be able to make it out here without crashing it has got a longer trailer which is a disadvantage for it yeah it's fine so uh, as long as it follows my route we should get it back in one piece I won't turn right at the first turning though, because it is a bit too tight for it. We'll continue onto the main road. But I think as a first day, obviously taking just the headland off is not a great achievement. But I think as a bit of that is the practice for tomorrow. Uh, as I've never actually had three going at the same time, especially on Follow Me, um, I think it was. I think it went quite well. I think that was quite a good. Uh, good setup there so we'll be able to really go for it tomorrow get the field done get the auger wagon going and uh, hopefully make quite a bit of money out of it just need to find the right shed for the barley. I think it's the one closest to us here. Nope. <laughs> Couldn't be more wrong. It's the one furthest away from us. The wheat and the barley is together. Need to make a note of that. So it's on the left side. That's the tractor and trailer done. I'll put it in this side so if it rains it's nice and dry. And then we'll bring the lorry and we'll tip that as well. So this is almost full as well. It's not a bad amount to get out of one, well three headlands it would be. Three times round, but it is a big field. So you should get quite a bit.
already almost filled the store. Wow, that is already totally full. Can barely even get the trailer in there. So I'm going to put the cover over. So if it rains, it's going to be dry. And I'll shut the shed up. Better turn the lorry engine off as well. We'll have no no a diesel in it in the morning. Um, and uh, yeah, let's just call it a day for now. So there we go. Thank you for watching everyone. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Uh, and we will, like I say, finish that field all tomorrow. We'll get it all done. And now, now all the preparation is done, all the setup is done. It should not take too long. So that will be in tomorrow's episode. Thank you for watching. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.